These are my Motorola S305 Bluetooth headphones. I bought them in 2015, seven years ago, and I've used them a lot, so much that I have already replaced the foam pads uh, quite a few times. I mean, they're obviously old, for example, they're micro USB and not USB type C, and they're not the kind of headphones that you would wanna buy today in 2022. But I kinda liked them because they were comfortable, the sound quality was good enough for me, the battery life was okay too, and surprisingly, Surprisingly, still okay today, but they have, uh, or I better say, used to have one annoying issue. They would randomly disconnect from my phone, and I had to do a power cycle to temporarily fix it. So back then my daily driver phone was this OnePlus One, so I figured the problem should be either the phone or the headphones. But I was wrong. The Bluetooth operates on the 2.4 GHz band. The Wi-Fi we have today can operate on the 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz or even 6 GHz bands. So the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth can actually interfere with each other. And if that happens, the results could be all kinds of connectivity issues or even decreased range or speed. And that was exactly what was happening to me because at some point I had stopped using the 2.4 GHz band for the Wi-Fi and only used the 5 GHz band. And during that time I never experienced any Bluetooth connectivity issues because obviously the 5 GHz band does not interfere with Bluetooth which is 2.4 GHz. They're different frequencies. So that was the light bulb moment for me. But not using the 2.4 GHz band for the Wi-Fi was not a permanent solution and it was more like a workaround. A more permanent solution would be to do something that the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth can coexist without interfering with each other. Now, the modern Bluetooth devices, they use a technique called Adaptive Frequency Hopping or AFH and with the help of it they can constantly scan the spectrum to find possible sources of interference. For example, in my case, the 2.4 GHz channel that my Wi-Fi is using. And then the Bluetooth device will try to avoid that portion of the spectrum, which this should prevent them from interfering with each other. Although these headphones are Bluetooth 2.0 and I can guess they use AFH, the problem was still there and I don't know why the AFH was not that effective. Maybe the 2.4 GHz band in my area was just too crowded that interference was inevitable. But I just didn't want to give up so I searched for some other solutions. And then I realized the Tomato firmware actually has a feature called Bluetooth coexistence. For those who might not know about Tomato, it is a third-party firmware that you can install on some supported wireless routers and it can add some advanced features that might not be available in the factory firmware. I've actually done some projects using the third-party firmware such as the DDWRT and Tomato and I'm gonna link them in the video description down below so check them out if you're interested. So the Bluetooth coexistence is disabled by default. And if I enable it on the router, according to this, it will make the router and Bluetooth device to take turns in using the spectrum for communication. If I set it to preemptive though, then the router will inform the Bluetooth device about the channel it is operating on. And the Bluetooth device can preemptively disable communication on the respective Bluetooth channel. So if I set it to enable, then the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth cannot use the spectrum at the same time and this could somehow decrease the speed or quality of the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and that's why in my opinion the preemptive seems to be a better option now, back then my wireless router was an ASUS RT-AC68U and luckily this feature is also available in the ASUS WRT which is the factory firmware for the most of the ASUS wireless routers and it can be found in the professional wireless settings of the 2.4 GHz band. So I decided to give it a try and when I set it to preemptive, 
Unfortunately, it didn't make any difference. But when I set it to enable, it actually made a whole lot of difference. And the Bluetooth connection became much more stable. Now, why exactly the preemptive didn't do anything? I don't know. What I know though, is that the Bluetooth device has to cooperate. And if it doesn't, then this will not have any effect. But the bottom line is the problem was resolved. And I know I've already said that the enable option might have a negative effect on the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi. But in my case, I didn't feel that much of difference. Maybe mainly because I only use the 2.4 GHz network for the IoT devices. And there's not much traffic on that network. So what I told you actually happened in 2017 and I kept using the Bluetooth coexistence for a while. I guess for as long as I use the headphones because right now these are my backup backup headphones. But I figured I should share this story with you because sometimes there are some features in our wireless routers and we're not even aware of them. And unfortunately, there's not even good information out there. For example, in this case, I couldn't find any useful information on the ASUS website or documentation. And I found it through the Tomato website. That being said, I would only use this if I'm really experiencing Bluetooth connectivity issues. And if it doesn't help, then I would make sure to disable it so it won't have any negative effect on my 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi thank you very much for watching this video i hope you liked it give it a thumbs up if you did share it if you think others might like it too and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this thank you again and i will see you soon